Hey guys, this is Steve. I'm not sure what that... Oh. I'm not sure what that goofball was trying to make there at the beginning of the video, but it looks like he figured out he needed to get some help. I want to talk about knives and, and tools and things like that today, um, but I, I'm making no claim that I'm an expert on every knife and carving tool made. Uh, just a guy that's been carving for a while and would like to share what I've learned. So if you're watching this as somebody that's recently discovered wood carving or whittling and you're looking for a little direction or advice on what you need to get started, you're probably in the right place. Now let's go ahead and get started. Okay guys, let's talk about what we're doing here today. When it comes down to it, there really isn't much that you need to get started uh, carving or whittling. You already know that YouTube is a good resource. and I have some other videos where I talk about different techniques and show different projects. I plan to keep making more. Uh, I'm always open to feedback. If you have any topics that you'd want to, that you might find useful or maybe a little entertaining or something you'd like to do or try or see me try. Um, there's also many books and other forms of reading material uh, it's a good place to kind of broaden your skill set. Uh, check local libraries. They you can get books. Um, they usually have some on some carving and whittling, and they have patterns and ideas and, and uh, maybe some techniques you can learn. Okay, so first things first. Carving and whittling requires that you use sharp tools. And to do that safely, I highly, highly recommend that you get yourself uh, a comfortable and flexible cut resistant glove like this is the, the kind I use here I think it's a wizard or something like that but the main thing is that it fits your hand nice and you know this one's got a bunch of holes in it it breathes nice and uh, I really like it uh, just, remember they're not uh, they're not cut proof gloves they're cut resistant it's meant for the occasional like unintended slip and it's to help prevent severe injury if that does happen uh, maybe later on I'll, I'll add a video on here about some different knife techniques that can help make it safer um, and then along with the uh, carving glove you need a thumb guard put the carving glove on your non-dominant hand and put your thumb, or your thumb guard on your dominant thumb and uh, I do have a video that's, uh, I'll get that put out after this one. And uh, that shows you how I, I make my thumb guards and what I use to do that. But Okay, so now that you have um, your safety gear, let's talk about tools. What do you really need? You really don't need much to get started. All you really need is to start out as a sharp knife that's suited to carving. Back in the mid to late 90s, uh, my dad got me interested in carving, and he gave me this knife. Um, it's, it's, a de it's a Denny detail knife. It says Denny on the handle there. That's named after uh, Denny Neubauer, I believe. The, he was the maker of the knives. And uh, for the longest time, I never even considered... Uh, looking for, you know, searching out different knife or different tools. And I think that's because I started out with a really good knife. It's all I really needed for a long time. And uh, after after a few years of only using a knife, I did get this uh, set of dockyard little micro gouges and found that was a nice way um, to add little detail into some of my carvings. Um, but to start out with, just start with a sharp knife, sharp carving knife. Um, to this day, I mean, I have different tools and knives and things, but I, most of what I carve is done mostly with a knife. There's, I do use other tools for details and things like that, but you can do a lot with just a knife. So let's talk about uh, what's available today and what I would recommend for you to get started with your first knife. Um, nobody, I don't have any 
affiliation with any any of these brands or anything. It's just what I've learned over the years and, and have discovered, I guess, on my own. Um, it has been said that uh, it isn't the knife that makes your carvings good. And I agree with that, but I do think there is a but. Um, there's There are high-quality knives, there's affordable knives, and then there's just cheap knives. And the cheap knives are made with poor quality steel. They have a poor design. And in my opinion, they're going to result in a frustrated carver. Could prevent you from even enjoying the, the hobby at all. I'm not going to bash any particular brand or source for those, but just don't go for the cheapest thing you can find. You'll be glad you didn't. Um, so what I'd like to offer instead is what I know to be a good option. I've heard and seen some okay reviews and people talk about Beavercraft knives. I've never owned any of them, so I can't give you an opinion. Um, they're relatively inexpensive. I, I looked some up. I was able to find them uh, online for around $13 for a knife. But like I said, I really don't know anything about them. What I, The brand that I do own, we do have some here, and I recommend I've... I've started my kids off with them. My wife has a couple of them too. Um, and that's a flex cut knife. And it's like this one you see here. It's a great beginner's knife. It's easy to, they're easy to find. They're made in the USA with good quality. They come sharp and they hold their edge pretty well. They can be found all over the internet. I've even seen some sold at a fabric store. Um, there are many different types that flex cut offers this one right here is probably what i would recommend as a starting knife it's a one and a half inch detail knife a knife like this is just so versatile it's got the real fine point on it for for getting in and uh, adding good detail and then but it's also long enough you know, they have other knives this one i have here is i think they call it a pelican blade kind of a curved curved shape to it i like that for roughing out too it's kind of got a a nice sweeping motion if you're doing these push cuts that are pretty common when you're roughing out you know to it really it's nice to just kind of roll that knife blade around um but if you if you're only picking up one knife grab an inch and a half detail knife and you can get a lot of a lot done with that you can learn a lot with it and you can pick these up um like i said they're widely available on the internet and i believe they're around 25 dollars for that knife and they'll last a long time. So if you're enjoying slicing off wood chips with your flex cut knife or whatever knife you choose to uh, begin with, and you really think you want to uh, put some effort into to learning and 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 uh, developing your carving skills, and if you can afford to spend, you know, around forty to fifty dollars for a knife, there is a difference. To be noticed by stepping it up a little bit. Uh, there's a few knife makers that I'm familiar with as well as some others that I've heard good things about, but these knives are made with much better steel and the blade design has been perfected for wood carving. A lot of them are made by people that are wood carvers. And uh, <clears throat> so like these here, I have several, I have four of these, I have four Helby knives here big fan of Helvy knives. Um, got uh, one rough out knife here and I have three detail knives with the only difference being just basically a little different colored handles. But I really enjoy these knives. They just slice through this wood so nice, so smooth, and and they they hold an edge really, really well. Um, so they're just a little bit, it's not that much more, maybe twice as much, I guess, in some cases, but between $40 and $50, you can get one of these. The trouble with knives like this is that they take a while. They're, they're, there's been a lot of interest, a lot of demand lately, last couple of years, and it's you, you end up on a waiting list. You have to put in your order. And it takes a while. It takes several months to get a, a Helvy knife or a Drake knife. It's the same same way. Um, but it's worth it. I mean, they're really good quality knives. So, again, my recommendation 
Start off with a flex cut that you can just get anywhere, and it's a great knife. You can do a lot of carving with it. And as soon as you think you're going to enjoy the hobby, put your order in for a Helvy or a Drake. Or uh, I know there's there's some newer ones that haven't been around as long. I don't personally own them yet, but I'm I want to. I'm gonna I'm gonna end up getting a couple of them. Uh, there's uh, deep holler knives, and then there's Badger State Blades is making knives. Um, both kind of the same class, I guess, is a Helvy knife where it's high quality steel and it's handcrafted. Um, handcrafted knives and worth the, worth the weight and worth the money, in my opinion. Okay, this video is focused on tools and tool maintenance. And I, I, but just as a quick mention, you need to have something to carve, right? And, and I have a similar philosophy about wood. You can carve most any type of wood uh, for the most enjoyable learning experience, carving experience. Find a source for a good quality northern basswood. Um, it does make a difference. Keeping your carving tools sharp isn't complicated, but it does require a little bit of knowledge and the commitment to uh, take some time to take care of it. Uh, this is a strop that uh, this is one my dad gave me years and years ago. It's a, just a piece of plywood with a couple pieces of leather glued to it and you just get stropping compound there's um there's a lot on that topic on the internet i guess uh this one's got some green compound on it uh recently with i got i think the last when i ordered the last my last two helvy knives i think i ordered some of their white compound and i really like that too um but get some compound rub it on there and it's, it's simple. It's just kind of think of it as carve a little bit, take a break, and strop a little bit. Carve a little bit, take a break, and strop. Um, and, and you'll maintain that edge, and you won't, you'll be much more satisfied with your carving experience. So just a quick little demonstration. You get a strop, and I, don't know, I tend to hold it at a little bit of an angle here with and on something solid. You shouldn't push down hard but just a little bit of pressure, even pressure. Lay your knife down the blades away from you or away from the direction you're going to travel and just pull it back. Here's the important part. When you get to the end, lift your knife straight up, then roll it over, put it back down, and do the same thing the opposite direction. And again, when you get to the end, lift it up, roll it over, and bring it back down and actually if you're just learning to do this I would even exaggerate those movements like that and you'll develop that habit which is a good habit from the beginning what you don't want to do is come to the end of your stroke on your strap and roll your knife that's just gonna you'll have a tendency to round over the front edge of your blade so again just a couple times here, up, flip it, down, up, flip it, down. Do your flipping in the air. And like I said, it looks a little silly, but if you exaggerate those movements, come, come to a stop, lift up, flip it over, go down, and you do that a few times, it'll just kind of be how you do it. As you go and as you get used to it, you'll probably exaggerate those movements less and less, but you don't don't want to roll your knife at the end. Okay, so we've talked mostly about knives. I've got my flex cut detail knife. It's working good, keeping it sharp. Everything's great. If you uh, feel like you want to get to where you can add a few more fine details, just to get some small gouges, um, like I mentioned earlier, I started out with the dockyard micro tools or micro gouges. They're an excellent tool. Now they're, you can still get these. Uh, they're made um, like a lot of these companies, knife companies and things like that. You know, they've, they've kind of passed on to another generation or whatever. And, and there's different people making these now, but they're the same tool. And 
this set is actually from, you know, I don't know, over 15 years ago or whatever. I had it a long time, um, but recently purchased another set of them and uh, gave those to my son. But they're they're the same tool. He, you know, it's still a good tool. And they're I like that they're kind of pencil shaped. You know, it allows you to kind of get good control here. It's like you're using a pencil. Just make little cuts in there. This is a U, a U gouge. I just <laughs> marked them with a U. Um, yeah, micro carving tools. So let's talk about that a minute. So they got the same rule applies to the little gouges and big gouges, all your carving tools. Keep them sharp. Keeping them sharp, you won't have to worry about resharpening them, at least not very often. So with the little gouges, same thing, strap. Um, and for the knives, I do have a, a power strap I got from chipping away. I use that all the time. It just does it, the process a little bit faster. It's the same thing, except instead of you dragging the knife across it, you hold it still and the belt's moving. Um but you don't need that to start. This this strap is what I've used for, like I said, it's got to be over 15 years, probably over 20 years. I don't know. Um, so same with the little gouges and things. You um, keep them sharp and, and just, uh, like for these U gouges, I just kind of roll it as I drag it. You find the, the angle there and just drag it down and roll it to get all the way across that surface. And you're saying, yeah, but what about the inside? Oh, we have stuff for that. They, um, this is actually a little um, stropping block that came, or not came with, I purchased it with the last set of these dockyard tools. And it's got the, I don't know if it's, you can see that, it's got a bunch of little profiles on it that match these tools. Um, I, this one, so basically you just find the profile on here that matches it. This is a three millimeter gouge and they got that shape and you just, you, uh, this is just a piece of wood and it's coated with uh, that green compound and you just put that over there and, and drag it across and that will get the inside edge and then you do the outside edge just on your strap like I showed before. And you got little V gouges and stuff like that, the same same concept. So I hope you found this information helpful. If so, don't forget to leave a like. And, and uh, if you have any comments or suggestions, drop those down in the comments section. And uh, I'd like to hear what you have to say. Take the time to find a good beginner's knife. I recommend the Flex Cut. Like I said, I don't have, don't have any affiliation or anything with that. I just, I just think they're a great beginner's knife. But just remember, avoid the cheap knives and grab yourself some safety gear and uh, find some good basswood and get to it. Just start making some chips. Remember, take it slow. Don't get frustrated. It's not very likely that the first things that you're going to make are going to make it into the Wood Carving Hall of Fame, which I, I don't even know if that's a thing. Anyway, anyway just enjoy the process and uh, keep pushing that knife through the wood. All right, thanks for watching.